Hello everyone, Chris Parker here with ParkerPhotographic.com and for the last few weeks I've been field testing the Nikon Z8 with 9 out of the 11 autofocus modes and like with the Nikon Z8 battery test I wanted to challenge the focusing modes to see how they performed in different situations and at the end of this video I'm going to provide my recommendations and how to overcome some of the limitations I encountered. Now for these tests, I used AFC mode and I used animal subject detection. So if you are ready, let's do it. All right, so the first three autofocus modes that I tested were the dynamic area focus modes. And they work primarily by targeting focus within this little box right here. Now, if your subject goes outside of it, the Nikon Z8 will continue tracking and focusing via these eight points right here, which are the outer boundary of the focus area. But as you can see, as the red-winged blackbird goes outside of that boundary, it loses focus. So now I'm switching over to another size, which is the medium, and the third is a large, and each one of them will target a larger area so you don't have to be as precise versus a smaller dynamic area. That being said, I still didn't find the dynamic area focus modes to be ideal for my type of shooting. So here's a bullfrog where I applied the dynamic area focusing to, and it's having a real hard time focusing on the subject even though I'm trying to tell Nikon where it is. As soon as I begin moving the camera over into this position, it recognizes this grassy area here and it doesn't realize that the subject is still within that area and I end up losing focus. And the one that I really like to use, the focus mode that I like using is the 3D focus mode. So with the 3D focus mode, you have to give Nikon a little bit of help in finding the subject within your frame. So you have to take the focus point place it on the subject and hold down your shutter release button halfway. And then that lets Nikon know, okay, this is the subject and it's going to do a very, very good job on keeping track of that subject as you recompose the image in camera or as the subject moves. Now it's not perfect because sometimes it will lose focus if it comes across something that is disrupting its view of the subject. So here we go, we can see that I've placed the focus point right here, this little white box here, and then it auto magically finds the eye of the bullfrog, and that is represented by this little green square right here. Here I have another focus mode that I tested out with this bullfrog as well, and it's called the wide area focus mode, and there are four of these to choose from. So basically, with the wide area, you get four different boxes or rectangles where the target of that focus is within this red boundary right here. So we have smaller and larger boundaries to choose from out of these four. This is wide L or wide large. So again, because it has subject detection activated for this focus mode, it also includes eye tracking. And as soon as we get outside of that subject or the subject gets outside of that box, it loses focus. All right, so here's a couple of ducks that I found in some very deep grass. We have one right here, it's really hard to see. This one's a little bit more visible. I did try to test out the dynamic area in the situation and it was able to focus on this duck here. And I think that's because this grassy area right here is on the same plane. And that's why I was able to get it in focus. So now I've switched over to 3D to see how well the 3D tracking would do in this type of a situation where we have a lot of this tall grass obscuring the ducks. So you'll notice that it's doing a pretty good job of focusing on the ducks as he dips in and out of the grass as well as this one here in the back. It's trying to focus on the eye. It recognizes it, but it's not able to focus on it fast enough as the duck moves around. So I wasn't able to focus on it at that point. However, I was still able to get a very tack sharp image under these types of conditions with the 3D autofocus mode. 
Here's a tree swallow that I found one day at our local marsh and he hung out with me for a good 10-15 minutes which was pretty awesome because I was able to navigate through all of the different focus modes to test them out. Now in this situation it's a little bit easier versus the other ones that I've shown you so far because the background isn't that busy and there's really nothing in the foreground to obscure the swallow's view to the Nikon focus system. So it did a really good job of keeping track of the eye of the swallow. As you'll see, this is wide large and I moved around back and forth and you can see how the focus disappears or gets lost once it's outside of that box and I'm coming back in. Now, the one thing I noticed here, because I focused on these branches in the background, the swallow is completely lost to the focus system. It doesn't recognize that there's an actual bird or a swallow right here. It can't see that shape. So what I had to do was I had to manually focus in order to bring it into a little bit of a focus before the Nikon system could recognize it as an animal. But once it did, it locks onto that eye and begins tracking the eye as I move around. All right, so here's another wide area mode that you can test out. It's more of a long triangle and it does a really good job as long as you keep that subject within that boxed area. Now, because it's not as tall, it's not ideal for this type of situation. I prefer this particular mode for birds in flight and I'll show you that at the end. All right, now I've switched to wide small to keep that focus right on the head of the swallow. Now, this is ideal if you have a very busy area around your subject, like trees, branches, leaves, things like that, because if a gust of wind comes in, it's possible that the movement of those leaves will distract the focusing system and cause it to lose focus. In that case, you may wanna switch to wide small to concentrate just on the head, but you have to be a little bit more precise trying to keep that swallow within that box. All right, now I've switched over to wide area C2, which gives us a vertical focusing box. Now for this particular setup, it's probably not ideal. I would prefer the horizontal box instead, but if I was shooting a tall animal, like let's say a giraffe or maybe a great blue heron that was standing in a marsh, I may wanna switch over to this vertical format instead. All right, now I'm switching over to auto area focus mode. And with auto area, you're giving 100% control to your Nikon Z8. So your Z8 is going to use the entire area or the entire frame to search, find, and then focus on your subject. So right now, I'm trying to throw off the focus area since it had already tracked it via 3D tracking and you can see it instantly finds the eyes once it recognizes that that is an animal. So it's just as quick, if not quicker than 3D tracking because I don't have to help Nikon in this case. It automatically finds the subject and the eye instantaneously in this situation. And I say in and I emphasize in because like I mentioned before, that was a clean setup. There was nothing in front of the subject like these leaves and branches are in front of this prothonotary warbler. And I'm still using auto area focus mode. And you can see it's targeting these leaves in the foreground and it's trying to find the subject within it and it can't. So what auto area mode does is it targets the elements in front of everything else. And if it doesn't recognize that that's not a subject, it's gonna have a hard time finding it until you help it out. So in this case, what I had to do was I had to adjust the monopod higher so it would then recognize more of the bird. And once it did, as you can see, it started finding and focusing on the prothonotary warbler and its eye even though it was moving erratically it was able to lock on occasionally to the eye now let's go ahead and go back here real quick because this is pretty important because 
The Prosanitary Warbler here is on the same plane as this stick here, and there's really nothing else in front of it. It has to start looking for the subject somewhere, and for some reason, if I zoom in just a little bit here, we can see right there, all these little focus points are trying to find the subject over here, even though it's over here on the right. So again, if you have any elements that are conflicting or competing with your subject, it's gonna have a hard time finding it initially. But unlike the previous one where the leaves were in front, there's really nothing in front of the warbler just on the sides, and therefore it was able to quickly find the warbler in this case and target the eye occasionally. Now this guy is moving a lot really fast and he's kind of pruning himself. So it's kind of going back and forth between focusing on the body and the eye. Overall though, I think it does a fairly good job or a really good job actually. All right, now this is interesting. This is the prosonitary warbler's nest. There are some offspring in here and you can see I have the focus point right here and it's recognizing this hole as the subject. Now, as soon as he flies in, it recognizes that there's a bigger object or a bigger subject, and it begins focusing on the warbler from this point. So even though I moved away and came back, it was able to lock onto that position again, and now it's starting to track the body, and it's going to lock onto the eye right here, I believe, maybe, maybe not. But let's see what happens here. And oh, it's still, oh, right there. Last second, it wasn't able to get the eye. I do believe I got a shot of this, which is this shot right here. So even though it didn't lock onto the eye itself, it still did a pretty good job in giving me a very sharp image. All right, now I'm checking out some birds in flight. I believe these were some vultures over the marsh here. I am in wide C1 with this long rectangle. And I like this particular focus mode for birds in flight that are gliding slowly or even moving fast, but are at a pretty far distance so I can keep them within the box. If they were closer and moving faster, I would probably want a larger area to focus on. So as the vulture flies around or glides around, you can see it's staying on target even though I made a huge mistake. And that's because I had done some portrait photos the day before and I had switched to the people subject detection mode, which you can see right here. So even though I'm tracking a bird with people detection, it's still doing a pretty good job. All right, so here's four tips to help you get the most out of your Nikon Z8 focus modes. So let's go back to that test that I did with the prothonotary warbler just before it arrived to its nest. Now, like I mentioned before, the focus system latched onto the round hole in the tree. So I'm curious to know if the focus system is recognizing the hole as a bird, or is it searching for a somewhat round shape and when it sees it, it thinks it's an animal and begins focusing on that shape. Or is it more complex than that? I have no idea. Now, if you do, let us know in the comments. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because if the subject is obscured by the foreground elements, that round shape is disrupted and it no longer looks like a round shape. So it no longer can detect that subject and loses focus on it. And the leaves obstruct that round shape of the warbler. But by changing my position, I reveal more of the shape of the warbler and now it's being recognized. So keep that in mind. If you have a lot of elements between you and the subject, the focus is not going to be able to focus on it. I also found that background elements can confuse the focus system sometimes as well. So for this goldfinch, it was perched on a branch and the foreground was clean, but the background had a lot of leaves in it and everything was going fine at first. And I was using auto area focus mode and it was locked on to the eye and tracking the eye as it focused, but a gust of wind came through and all of the leaves started to move violently all over the place. And it seemed to confuse the autofocus system and it lost the subject in the process. 
It wasn't until the wind died down that it was then able to focus on the goldfinch again. Now, I don't have video of this. I didn't have it at the time, but this is the image that I captured during that sequence. Now, when it comes to birds in flight, it's best to have some contrast between your background and your subject. If they both have similar colors or brightness levels, the focus system is going to lose your subject in the background. Now, this last tip is a little counterintuitive when choosing an autofocus mode. And I mentioned this previously, and that is sometimes you're gonna need to help out the focusing system find the subject if it's extremely out of focus and you will need to use manual focus to help it find the subject. All right, so check out this Nikon Z8 playlist for additional tests that I've done with the Z8, as well as menu setting recommendations and much more.